Hello everyone, welcome to Exalt 3D Design's channel and today we are going to talk about hot ends. Uh, more specifically we're going to talk about all metal hot ends because there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of information on these um, online anywhere. As in regards to the different types of hot ends, if there's heat breaks or if you go with a complete hot end style like this one here. So we're going to talk about that, we're also going to talk about PLA and how to make all metal hot ends and PLA work. Um, I currently have six Ender 3 Pros and three BQB1s that all run all metal hot ends in one shape or form and PLA 24-7, no clogs, maybe once every three to four months and it's easy to fix. So we're going to go over that and how to make that work. Um, first thing I want to go over um, is the quick mechanics of a hot end. This might seem a little redundant, but I guarantee you this will help with the explanation of it um, soon here. But anyways, so with a normal hot end, you are going to have obviously your, um, let me put this up here too. So this is your normal hot end right here. On Ender 3 Pro, this is what you're going to get. So you're going to have your heat brake, and your heat brake is going to have the tube that goes all the way through, obviously. This right here would be the heat brake. So this is your heat brake, tube goes all the way through, and it contacts right up to your nozzle. Like so. Heat block, of course, this guy here be in the middle. The only um the only problem I well I call it the major flaw with this system that I absolutely hate is the fact that you have to have your tube seated perfectly, and perfectly is not even an understatement, and maybe this is just my bad luck. But you have to have your tube seated nearly perfectly on the edge of this heat break and where it meets your nozzle and if not you will get a pool of filament literally within that very small spot and it will clog your system within the first layer so to remedy that I moved on to all metal hot ends and I had a good couple issues with it until I just tried something completely out of the ordinary but it worked and it's worked very well and it makes sense now that I thought about it you know going on a couple years of doing this so anyways so with your PTFE tubing obviously this thing is gonna reach about 200 to 200 and let's say 20 Celsius now PTFE is actually uh, also a lubricant as well as obviously a solid here so when this tube heats up it actually performs a lubricated area for your filament to go through and when it goes through, comes through here, and it comes out to your nozzle, it has got a completely lubricated area. So the problem is when you go to an all metal hot end, say like this one for example, which is what I usually use on my Ender 3 Pros, it has the, uh, the collar on it. As you notice here, all metal pretty much means it's metal from, from nozzle to um, your heat brake. That's what the all metal is, and you know it's kind of dumb but that's just what it's called and how it's identified so your your tube literally goes into your all metal heat break that far which is maybe a couple millimeters and then after that it's just the filament that goes all the way through which is really nice because your that way your tube does not have to seat to your nozzle so the great part about this is is all you have to do is tighten this up into your your uh, your block and then you tighten your nozzle up on your block make sure they're touching and you're done there's no reseating the tube you don't have to push the tube as hard as you can to get it in there none of that that is completely avoided by doing this system and the nice part is is this here does not have to be a square cut at all it doesn't matter what cut it is because there's no heat in here to melt this at this point right now down here we'll talk a little bit later which is where usually most of the problems occur so but there's a problem when we take out this PTFE tubing whoops let me restudy my camera the PTFE tubing from this we are removing the lubrication that our PLA needs because it's considered a low temp filament um, to get to the nozzle so a lot of people have our clogging issues and they're usually right up in here so in order to solve this we have to substitute 
And though this, people say, no, you don't need to do this. Well, I've done it for two years and never had issues. And people that have done this have found out this also solved their issues. So in order to do this, we need to substitute a lubricant, so to speak. So that way our filament can get all the way through without getting seized up in our all metal. Now, to go over it. This here is another type of all metal. This just doesn't have a collar on it, just in case your heat block is a little bit longer. But also, this one is also a tad bit shorter too. Now, real quickly, I want to um, talk about these as well. This is a Gulf Coast Robotics All Metal Hot and They go for about 35 bucks on Amazon. This is the whole setup. Um, all you have to do is just switch your, if you go to this side, switch your um, heating element and your thermistor over to this one. And I like this because it doesn't have it has its own compression fitting, which is actually really easy to take out, as well as really easy to do. You just have this here, and then all you have to do, this will actually pop up, and then you just push that down, and then you pull your tube right out. And it's plastic, so you don't have to worry about um, with a normal compression fitting, if you noticed on some tubes, they have teeth in here and them teeth if you rotate that tube will literally make a seam in your tube and good luck getting that thing out sometimes a lot of people actually have to cut their tube off this one um, does not have any teeth marks on it let me find one that does real quick all right so here is this one's just came off my bqb1 so this right here is the um, extruder end that came in and this one here, now you can see all these nice little chew marks. Those are all from compression fittings, which are these guys. And you can see how beat up this is. Um, this is one that has an all metal hot and That's literally all the farther that goes into it before it's just filament all the way out. So if I was to, just for an example here, if I was to uh, show you how this went, there's my all metal, there's my nozzle. That's what my system would look like. And that's all the farther it would go in. So, just to show you that real quick. Alright, so let's talk about the solution to this. I've been babbling long enough. So here we are. This is mineral oil. It's a very light oil. I got this at Rite Aid. I think it was about six bucks. I will never probably use this entire bottle for this application in my entire lifetime. Because um, if you use an eyedropper, which I have misplaced mine now, um, you will simply... When you, let's use uh, this as an example here. So, um, we take your compression fitting off, or actually let's use the GCR. Um, heat up your block, leave the nozzle in, and you'll put a, about a drop, maybe two small drops in this while it's on, and while it's hot, heat it up to about, usually 200 is about your normal preheat. And you just let the set, and what it's going to do is it's going to go in here and it's going to settle and it's going to start kind of seizing in that and kind of simmer in there. And then after about, I don't know, give it a few minutes, five or so, go ahead and take your filament and stick it in there and just kind of push it in and let it pressurize and just kind of let your filament seep out. Like, you know, like what happens after you have a print or before a print, you'll have that filament that just kind of dangles out. Let it sit there. Then go ahead and run your first print. So you're not going to like drain it. Um, you're not going to sit there with your hot end and go like this and try to get out. You're not going to take your nozzle because you want that oil to stay in here. Now, with this hot end, this um, one doesn't have like a standard heat break because this is like literally an all-in-one solution. So if we take this out, this is like the heat break, which honestly, um, after going to just all-metal heat breaks, which are this one and the other one that ran, ran off on me. This one here. Um, I recommend going this route versus going this route because honestly, I'm not a big fan of the Allen wrench. Well, I mean, obviously these all have Allens, you know, holding this on here, but this can be a pain because I recently got a hot end where the tip of this coupler was maybe a half or quarter millimeter too tall therefore this flat side would not touch the underside there and it was literally pooling just exactly like what would happen here at the tip if your tube wasn't sitting so 
Um, I recommend just going with these, and they're also a lot cheaper. I think it's like twelve dollars for a pair of these versus thirty-five bucks for the whole setup. And the only thing I really like better is um, this fitting. But like, obviously, if you have the compression, you can just unscrew it and pull it out with the tube. You don't even have to worry about that part. But yeah, with this, every single clog would happen right in there. Luckily, they didn't happen on this part. That would more suck. But and then I had to take um, from this side and push it out and everything else. But this right here is where you want that oil to settle. So I put that back together. And so that is the GCR version. But yeah, anyways, you're going to put your oil in there, let it settle. And then what that is going to do is that is going to create your lubricated area that your PLA goes through. And it works for me. I will not guarantee that it works for you, but it works for me and has worked great over the last year or two. Like I said, I actually prefer this system over the normal one because, like I said, when I get a clog, I'm like, oh, this kind of sucks to get a clog. Literally take, get in my compression fitting here. Get on my compression fitting, take this out, take the tube out, take the nozzle out, shove that in, push that out, put the nozzle back together, put this back together, done. I don't have to worry about reseeding this, I don't have to look, oh, is my nozzle that close? I have to take the nozzle off and, you know, usually you have to take the nozzle off this end and then you got to come back to your heat break when you're putting your tube back in and you got to watch so closely to make sure that's there. No, we don't have to do any of that. There's no Luke's hot end fix. Where you have, you know, the short piece with the compression washer that you print. No, we don't need any of that at all. We just need the heat break and then that compression fitting simply just keeps that tube seated nice to where your filament comes through so it doesn't buckle. But no, these, I mean, the all metal hot ends work great on PLA. You just need a type of seasoning or lubrication to make sure it doesn't get stuck. But anyways, throw you um, some comments, suggestions. Let me know if this worked for you. It would be great. This seems to be the little bit of information that's not out there or people say, hey, you don't need a season. Well, yeah, with PTG or ABS, which is mostly what this is meant for, no, you don't need a season because they're, they're, they're built differently. They have different materials inside of them. PLA is not like that. PLA is a little bit of an odd duck when it comes because it is, you know, it's for simple things but we got to make sure that we're keeping this this lubricated right now but anyways thank you very much for watching and i hope this helped you out